Okay, it's been a while, but um, here we are with part two, and this time we're going to make a panel. And uh, so here I've opened control and got a blank screen. Let's go file, new panel. Here we go. Let's drag this out. And this, these are all the properties of the panel itself. So start with some basic stuff. If you notice here on the canvas bounds, now if I grab this and make it bigger, there you go, that's where you set the panel size basically. So we need to add something, don't we? Well, I'll tell you what we need to do first actually, we need to add a MIDI device on the input and the output. That's because if we don't have one selected, we won't be able to monitor what the panel is outputting on the MIDI. If we look, if we use tools MIDI monitor here, we show raw data and make sure that these are ticked here, monitor input and monitor output, and then we can see what the panel is sending. So if we right click on the panel, we can add components. Uh, let's start with the sliders. We've got four different options for the sliders. We'll start with number one, which is the UI slider. And we get this thing here called modulator one, which pops up. Again, if we go down to in the component generic section, component position and size. There, if we drag it out, you can see we're changing its size. And if we drag its position, you can see we change its X position and its Y position on the panel. So if you need to fine tune its position or size, you can just punch the numbers in here directly. You don't have to do it all by dragging and doing that. It's called modulator one. So if we go into the very top on the modulator, you can see the modulator name here is modulator one. Now every modulator on the panel needs its own unique name here. And this is the kind of thing that is a variable name. So you really want to think carefully about what you call things and make sure you call them logical names for use in scripting later. So for now, we'll just quit. we'll leave it as modulator one, but um, you'll see that when it gets more complicated, you'll, you'll be glad that you had a, a, a sensible naming system for your modulators. Um, okay, uh, its value that it can take is set here in the component section. You have a minimum value of zero and a maximum value of one, two, seven. So if we come out of editing mode by doing panel mode here, we can have a minimum of zero and a maximum of one, two, seven. And that is set and where it was before, where was it? Let's find it. Oh, no, I'm not. I need to highlight it first. There we go. In the component section, there we go. Minimum value and maximum value. So you might not want zero to one, two, seven. Depends what you're trying to control. Depends on the equipment. You might want to change that to some different value, some different range. You can do it there. Um, the other thing is the rotary, vertery, drag style. What that means is if we come out of editor mode again, that means to change it, I need to drag vertically like this, which is a bit odd, I think. So we go back into editor mode, you can change that to rotary. And we go to panel mode, and now if you drag the mouse around the circumference of the modulator, it changes like that, which is a lot more logical to me if you've got that particular style. Back into editing mode again, highlight the modulator. You've got this particular rotary style. You can have a linear bar if you want. There we go. And instead of, you know, and you can just slide it like that if you want. You can do everything you want, just to have a play basically. I'm gonna set that back to rotary, I think, just for now. There we go. And it's not very square, is it? I'll do that. There we go. So let's send some MIDI with this, shall we? In here is the MIDI section. There we go. And at the moment it says MIDI message type none. So let's change it to a continuous controller. MIDI controller is one. So it will, will be MIDI continuous controller number one. And that's basically all we need to do. And that will go from zero to one, two, seven. So if we 
go into normal mode again and if we slide it backwards and forwards like this and if we look at the MIDI monitor screen, remember we pulled that one up you can now see it is sending B0 which is a continuous control of messages and 01 which is continuous control number 1 and then a hexadecimal value there for which position we are in um, can't remember if I mentioned it now but this 0 to 127 that is a decimal number and that will get converted into a hexadecimal number when it is sent from the panel um, under tools here you have a MIDI calculator which is quite useful so uh, we sent 47 as the last one so if we put 47 into decimal section that tells us the hexadecimal version is 2F and if we look at our MIDI monitor screen and the last message we sent was value we sent was 2F there you go thank God for that I've proved myself right okay right instead of sending uh, continuous controller messages from this modulator let's send some system X instead so we go into the MIDI section change it to system X and then we put our system X formula in the box here that says system X formula and I'll just make something up I think some random manufacturer, some random piece of kit in some random form. I'm going to put two lowercase x's here as the very last thing before the uh, closing message F7, like that. And if we go into out of edit mode and we do this, there we go. Instead of sending um, continuous control messages now you can see we're sending system X messages and the system X uh, formula stays the same except for the very last one which changes as we change the modulator so yeah so you guessed it I'll spell it out for you so what's happening is that this decimal value here of 98 is getting converted into hexadecimal and it will get inserted wherever you put the lowercase X's in the system X formula that's a simple way of doing it there are far more complicated ways of doing it and I shall go into that sort of thing in a later tutorial but that's so that's a basic basic way of sending system X things from this modulator okay let's move on to the next type of slider let's go for a image slider okay this is exactly the same as the previous slider except we don't see anything here that's because we need to use an image instead of this generic um, bar thing here, this rotary thing here. In order to use an image, we need to import it into the panel. So over here, you'll see a resources bar. We need to add in our picture. So here I've got some previously done um, pictures, and I've named them sensibly. You'll you'll also as long as you as well as uh, naming all your modulators with sensible names so that you can deal with them later. You'll, it also helps a lot if any um, images that you use in your panel, you also give them sensible names. So you can see I've called this one here 101 FR, which means it's 101 frames and it is 80 by 80 pixels. It's very useful to know that, as I'll show you now. So if we open that one, that gets imported. We go back to the general tab. If we now scroll down on the options for this modulator, here we see image resource and we can now select that one there, but it doesn't display it properly and I'll go into that now. So for a start, this is 101 frames, so by 80 by 80, what does that mean? Okay, have a. this is the style of the image here. You can see it's a vertical strip basically of 80 by 80 pixel frames uh, and there are 101 different ones of them all representing the knob in different states of rotation and that is how it is done so for a start um, we our minimum maximum values here are wrong because because our um, they're wrong because um, our image only goes up to 101 frames so this needs to go to 100 so if we wanted to go from 0 to 127 we would need a 128 frame image file I'm going to go into images and uh, graphics and how you use that in the panels in a later one but I'm just I'll just explain this for now and it's 80 by 80 so 
again in here in the component generic section in the frame width and the frame height we need it we need to specify what it actually is which is 80 by 80 pixels per frame and again here it will display itself better if we change the size of the modulator to match you can see it just jumped there in zoom but it's slightly zoomed in and looks a bit fuzzy if you want it to look good at that style you'd, you'd be better off having the image in that, in that number of pixels to start with so if I just change the modulator size here to 80 by 80 and you can see the image frame orientation is vertical that's for the vertical strip and the frame paint mode is centered in that was it, it means it puts the frame in the middle of the modulator window which is fine and then you get a nice thing like that and then if we go out of edit mode you can see now instead of a generic looking rotary thing now we have a nice looking knob that does exactly the same thing we come up edit mode we'll go back into edit mode again and we'll move on to the next one so sliders that's a fixed slider so let's do a fixed slider okay the fixed slider looks exactly like the first one the ui slider um, it has an important difference though you notice the the first one the ui slider it always displayed the decimal number here underneath it 0 to 127 in that case uh, but you might want to not have a decimal number under there you might want to display something completely different like words for instance so that's when you use a fixed slider and if you'll notice here in the component section you now have a completely new option here which is slider contents and in here you can write anything else so we might write off return half and on and now if we move this slider around we have off half and on instead of numbers which is useful and um, but you won't be sending them if you do if you go into the MIDI section of this module here you'll still be sending zero for that one for that and two for that and then as long as you carry on it'll just keep incrementing it by one um, so you can just put in as many as uh, different positions here as you need and as you go around the slide it will go zero one two three four five as far as you go basically okay that's a fixed slider and the last one last slider is a ui fixed image slider which is um you can probably guess if you've been following so it's an image slider where you can put an image in and it's a fixed one where you can also specify the slider contents here so a combination of the two okay and that's sliders and that's uh, basically how you put them in and how they work see you in part three